the greatest of all time avenges his second loss. We rewind as we throw it back on this Thursday. Cool Sports presents On The Daily. Well, how are you doing, everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Cole Johnson's on the mic on the Daily Sun Tap, presented by Cole Sports. And if this is your first time VIP, like this video, comment below, because I really do want to hear what you have to say, especially about this episode. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get each and every episode as it happens. And this wonderful shirt that I'm wearing, all I got to say is go to the description box below. The link is there. And we ain't going to warm up. We're going to go straight to the main event. And this is Thursday. We do a throwback Thursday style. And this was an interesting event that happened on September 10th. And I, I for those who don't know, I am a huge boxing fan and I love boxing history. In fact, I think I'm at most at home when I talk about boxing history and an important boxing match happened on this date in 1973. And I will talk about the greatest of all time and Ken Norton in this episode's <laughs> So let's go back to March the 31st, 1973. Muhammad Ali is boxing a little known heavyweight that came from the Marines in Kenneth Norton. Now, Ali was still a titan in the boxing world. I mean, he, he only suffered one defeat, and that was at the hands of Joe Frazier back in 1971 in the fight that was dubbed the fight of the century. Now, that was, of course, two years removed, the fight between Norton and Ali. It was two years removed, almost to the date, two years removed from Ali's first defeat. However, on this date, Norton's victory against Ali, it was so stunning and it was so complete that Ali met up against a fresher, stronger, hungrier, more aggressive boxer. And because of that, Ali's jaw was broken. Now, I know it's not the first time his jaw was broken, but it was reportedly broken in a way that it never had been before. Norton dominated against Ali to the point where he almost doubted if he could come back. So he had to prove to himself, forget the wrestling, pu um, I'm sorry, forget the boxing public. He had to prove to the boxing world that he was indeed one of the biggest power players still in the game. So unlike that loss to Frazier, where Ali took his time to avenge it, Ali quickly wanted to avenge this setback. So in a move similar to what Sugar Ray Leonard did to Roberto Duran, Mr. Hands of Stone, in a rematch getting it five months later after their Montreal Classic, Leonard outclassed Duran in the Superdome the second time around. Now, that was in 1980, and Ali tried the same tactic seven years prior. So their first fight in San Diego, Ali was not quite limber. He was slow. He was sluggish. He stood still. He was more of a stationary target, and he was heavier. And so he trained so doggedly that people were shocked to see him sleeker and lighter than his previous bout with, Jordan, with Norton. Now, the goal of Ali in training for this fight was to be the quicker fighter of the two, and to not be such the stationary target that he was in the March fight, March 73 fight with Norton. Only one problem, though. Norton was a double tough customer himself. And Ali had a difficult time trying to solve him. Ali never really got a clean shot on him. I mean, he may have tattooed him and scored points, but he never really did put him in trouble. 
with any of the shots that he dropped. Not really. And quite frankly, that straightforward style proved to be a problem. And it's understandable. I mean, it was the same issue that caused him to be perplexed with Joe Frazier as well. So it stand it stood to have that be a difficult issue with with Ali when it came to Norton too. And Norton was a bigger guy. So Norton presented a bully problem to Ali. Fair enough to say, right? All right, so man, get as hyped for this as I am, because in, in in describing this fight and seeing it too, whoo. I just love the energy of it. Uh, it wasn't for a heavyweight championship, unfortunately, but it was for the opportunity to be in line for a heavyweight championship opportunity. Now, the early rounds of this fight, I'll even say the first four. It was almost like a throwback to the 1960s, Ali. You, you know, the the guy who danced and shuffled and would do some combinations real quick and then start to dance around the ring again, basically moving like a middleweight, just bouncing around the ring, ring like a, like a middleweight, basically taking his style from Sugar Ray Robinson, just, you know, just being light on his feet, tattooing you really good with his combinations and then bounce again. You wouldn't get a good clean shot on him because he just was too, too mobile, too swift, danced around the ring, literally and figuratively. And, the jabs that he that he used against Norton kept him at bay. And so the first four rounds were all Ali's. And even the showman himself had to outdo himself. <laughs> so when each round was over for the for the first, second, third, and fourth, Ali didn't even take the stool. He stood in his corner. You know, taking direction from Angela Dundee, the Hall of Fame trainer. And of course, his corner man, uh, <laughs> Bundini Brown. Uh, Bundini Brown. And so, bef- about ten or fifteen seconds before the round would begin, the next round would begin. Ali would skip to the center of the ring and bounce around, and basically, he's trying to signal to Norton, basically playing mind games with him, saying, "I'm faster, I'm quicker, and I can move like this all night." And so he was bouncing on his feet. He was light. He was quick. And he was almost his normal self. One problem, though. He did not hurt Norton. And Norton didn't fear whatever offense Ali threw at him. So when it came to the fifth round, Norton took over the fight. And so with the jabs that Ali was scoring to keep Norton at bay, Norton started to land and, and score with jabs of his own. Now, it may not have been as flick. It may not be as fast like the flickering of a wrist with Ali's jab, but Norton's jab was a bit harder. And Ali felt it. And along with those jabs that were a little harder, Norton used that round to pound on Ali's body. I mean, he closed the fifth round with devastating body offense and then two left hooks. And as they went to their corners, Norton said to Ali, quote, I own you. Close quote. Well, it was on. The sixth round was the crowd-pleasing round because both guys were really feeling themselves. Both guys got their offense in, and both guys were uh, aggressive and offensive-minded. Norton continued with the left jabs and the, and the hooks, both right and left. Ali would counter that with a series of rights, and both were active. Both tried to put the other out in that round. Of course, neither one did, but the the Inglewood, California crowd, the fabulous forum crowd, loved the action. So the first head of fight was more like Ali keeping Norton at bay with the the stinging jabs and every now and then the the straight rights. The second half of the fight was more along the lines of what Norton wanted to do. Trap Ali in the corner, bully him, and lean on him and then just get him good body shots, both with the left and right, so that he could take the wind out of Ali. So the seventh round looked like Norton was about to wrap up his second win against Ali, 
But the former champ tried to come alive in the eighth. Tried to dance around and he tried to assert his authority and tried to show that he wasn't he wasn't affected with the 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 three the three previous rounds. <sighs> Until a perfectly timed left foot by Norton stopped all that. And the fresh bouncing leg Dali in the earlier rounds gave way to a more prodding, plotting, stationary target later in the fight. So they went toe to toe in the ninth. And both both were impressive. And the 10th also belonged to Ali. Of course, he wasn't as agile on his feet, but he did score with some shots. Didn't sting Norton, but it got it got the it got the message across. Now Norton, though, in the tenth round, connected with some nice shots too. The eleventh round, that was Norton's best of the night. He was at his bullying best, trapping him in the corner and viciously attacking that body, and he attacked it with lefts and rights to the body. And because of that attack, Ali looked absolutely tired and spent. And it looked like Norton was building strength. And then the 12th round would prove to be Ali's best. (laughs) As that fighting championship spirit came back and he got to be that light-footed dancing guy that he was the first four rounds. And he struck Norton with the shots that kept him at bay again, almost like he did when he started the fight with the first, second, third, and fourth rounds. But he mixed the jabs and the rights and mixed it with some uppercuts, too. And Ali poured it on, and he wanted to make sure that he would actually win the fight. And he did, but he won it by split decision. And unfortunately, (laughs) it wasn't, uh, how can I say this? It wasn't an exclamation point of an avenging. It was more along the lines of, well, you know, Norton could have taken that fight too. It was pretty much along those lines. And a lot of people were starting to doubt Ali being that force that he was in the 60s and even from 1971 to to now, I mean, to, to this time period. Well, Norton went on to actually uh, vie for the heavyweight championship of the world. That following March against George Foreman, he got knocked out in the second round. Ali, in the same year, avenged the earlier loss against Frazier in a 12-round nice box, nice boxing match against, against him in Madison Square Garden. And then the rumble in the jungle, the eighth-round knockout that Ali levied against Foreman made Ali the heavyweight champion of the world for a second time. Of course, he went on to win it another time. Norton fought for another 10 years himself, and he was a tough, tough, tough boxer for anybody, including Ali. And I think he was probably one of Ali's toughest, if not the toughest. Now, Norton is probably known also for producing the son, who was a world champion champion, uh, linebacker for the Cowboys and the 49ers, Ken Norton Jr. It was good to just simply think about those two, Ken Norton, Muhammad Ali. They were at their best. They fought one more time three years later, but it wasn't quite as good as this boxing match was on this date in 1973. Two all-time greats treated us to a wonderful event. Thank you, Norton. Thank you, Ali. Now, if you really do want to have more of these episodes, like this video, comment below. I want to hear what you think about Norton Ali too. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I do this all for you. Thank you so much for joining me on this channel. I love you, VIP. I love bringing this to you. And for all of us at Cole Sports, I'm Cole Johnson. This has been yet another installment of Cole Sports on the visual and on the daily.